Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there, fathers in the flesh and fathers in the faith. We're, this is what I call man's day. <laughs> and so you men, all you men, whether you're a father or not, in the flesh, you're welcome to take a flashlight and let your light shine. Now this particular, at all the flashlights we ordered, this particular flashlight needs some help from a father. It'll work some of the time, but it won't. Now I can't even get there. Now it's kind of working. You can kind of see it. <laughs> so it's got a defect. So I was like, I'll take that up here. But there's these kind, and then there's also the clip-on kind. So please take a flashlight and let your light shine. These lovely flowers are from Karen McArdle in loving memory of her own father and her husband, Phil. Um, they're made from her garden flowers and her birthday flowers. So please keep all our folks who are missing fathers and missing men in their lives in your prayers today. And Mountain Mission will guarantee, they said, be here on Thursday at 4.30. <laughs> So drink plenty of water and come and help us because we'll need lots of help. That garage is full, <laughs> over full. So we're not taking donations until after that garage is empty. <laughs> so do not bring anything until next week. <laughs> so we've canceled all that. All right, we want to say congratulations to Kelsey and Jake Thomas who got married. Uh, Jake is the son of Vicki and Randy, and they had a really nice service up at Misswood Golf Club uh, this weekend on Friday. So congratulations to them and to all couples who are starting their lives out together. Um, they postponed their wedding for a year, so it was a joyous time for them. Well, happy birthday. We got. Oh, now it's working. Sorry if I blind someone. Happy birthday to people having birthdays this week. A couple that are here I know of at least, and probably more, Phyllis and Becky. Happy birthday to you, and happy anniversary. Look at all these June anniversaries. Great time to get married. To get married, including myself, is a great time. So, and I, Some of you have been asking about this brace I have on my leg. Um, I, got, I had an old baseball injury from a wild pitch, um, and so uh, finally it's caught up with me. So <laughs> it's no, no, I don't have any pain, but I do have some swelling, and my doctor said, if you don't wear it, you're going to be in trouble. So <laughs> I don't want any trouble, so I'm wearing it. So sorry, fashionistas, I don't like it either, <laughs> but just ignore it. That's what I do, because God is good, friends, all the time. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. a joyous prelude to begin our worship, wasn't it? Thank you, Ellie. Let's join together in our call to worship. 
We have been created by our loving Heavenly Father to be His children. We gather in Jesus' name to worship God our Father and to offer our praise and our service through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our opening praise. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we remember with special gratitude those men who have taught us to follow Jesus. Bless all fathers this day, fathers in the flesh and fathers in the faith, that they may continue to witness to you. Help them to continue to provide us guidance for our lives. 
understanding and patience with all the children among us, and love for one another. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll welcome Stacy up. And then children, it's your time. So anyone to come down? Yes. Good job, young man. Come on down. You can come down. Yes. Hi, you want to sit right there? Good morning. How are you? Awesome. Well, oh, our, and here it comes. Oh. Hold on for the mouse and huns. Here they come. Hi. Good morning. Sorry, I forgot you were here. I saw you were here, but I forgot you were here. Here you go. Our story in the Bible today comes from the Old Testament, and it's about a lady named Ruth and a man named Boaz. Now, Ruth had to come from a different country, so she came from far away, and when she got to her new country, she didn't have any money, so she was very poor. And she also traveled with her mother-in-law named Naomi. Now, Boaz was kind of a leader in his community, and he had some fields. And Ruth had to get a job working in the fields. So she had to pick things out of the field. And what she got, she shared with her mother-in-law, Naomi. So she took care of her. So Boaz noticed this. And he thought, wow, well, Ruth is being very kind to Naomi. And he really liked that. So he trusted God's promises. Now, because Ruth was a woman by herself, she didn't quite get to do everything that, everybody else, that the men got to do. So Boaz had to help her. And he paid a special price so that she would be accepted and she would have everything that she needed in the community. And then later, Boaz and Ruth got married. And it all happened because Ruth was being kind to Naomi and then Boaz was being kind to Ruth. Let's see, this is just water. Do you know what this is? Pepper. 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 All right, we're gonna put some pepper in the top of my water. It kind of does look like fish food. You're absolutely right, it does. Get enough in there that we can see. Can you see, can you see the pepper in the pepper in the water? Yup. Now Ruth and Boaz were kind, and God wants us to be kind, but sometimes people say things that aren't kind, or they do things that aren't kind. Now you have to watch really closely. So our pepper are our family and our friends, people that come to church, people that we know. Now this is unkind. So watch really close and see if you can see what my pepper is doing. You can get close, yep. See if you can see anything that the pepper is doing. Oh yeah, it's going down to the bottom. Okay, it's going down, okay, it's, look right in the center. It's moving away from the toothpick. So when things are unkind, we kind of move away from them. We don't like that. We walk away. We walk away, we do. But God wants us to show kindness like Jesus. So this is sugar. And we have to watch really closely again. Let's see what happens. What do you notice the pepper doing as we add the sugar? What do you see? It's going fast. It's going fast? And is it going down. Oh, down? Yes, going down. And is the pepper going out or is the pepper coming back in? What do you think? I think it might be going back in. It's coming back in. So when we're kind, that draws us back to God. <gasps> How awesome. Oh, we need a lot of kindness in this world. We do. Now, I did use the whole pack. Boaz showed what it would be like when Jesus came. And God wants us to be part of his chosen people too. But we're kind of like Ruth, and we need somebody to pay a price for us. 
who do you think paid a price for us? Jesus. You are 100% right. Jesus paid the price for all of us. So Jesus did something very kind so that we can be drawn to God through him. That is right. Jesus paid the price, so the gift for us is free. It doesn't cost us anything. But how do we know? How do we know if we have Jesus in our heart? What do we have to do? Oh, we have to be kind to others. Wow, that's awesome. That certainly is very helpful, yes. And we have to know in our heart, and we say, I believe in Jesus. And because I believe in Jesus, I am going to be kind to other people. And if somebody gets pushed over, go and help them. Yes, if somebody gets pushed over, absolutely go and help them. And God wants us to help others who are sad or hurt or lonely. And that's being kind. And that's being like Jesus and showing them God's love. Great job. Let's say a little prayer. Thanks for helping me. Dear God, we thank you so much for your greatest kindness in sending Jesus to pay the price for all of us. Help us to pass on that great kindness and love so that others will receive your free gift. And all God's people said, amen. Good job. Thank you for helping me. Now we're going to take just a minute. You, yep, awesome. You did that when you prayed. Awesome. All right, we're going to take just a couple minutes. You can actually stay here if you want, because we're going to talk about one of my most favorite things that's coming up in about three weeks. Anybody have any ideas what that is? Vacation Bible School. So we, well, we're going to watch a little video in just a second here and kind of see what our theme is and some things that are going to happen. So we'll be ready for that in just a second. Check it out. Watch on the screen. It's about to begin We're going somewhere that we never been before I can't wait to see what God has in store So put your cell phones down, ain't swipe time This is all about Jesus Christ time Cause he's the way and the truth and the lifeline Hands in the air, night time, night time I got armor, yes I do I got armor, how about you? Looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Our version may look a little different than that, but still a lot of fun. So if you have children or grandchildren or neighbor children that have completed kindergarten through fifth grade, we would absolutely love to have them join us. And you can register online at our webpage, or you can also call the church, and we would be happy to help you get registered. There is an updated supply list because we're still looking for some things that we need to play our games and make our crafts and do our science projects. So there's an updated list on the, on the table in the back by the orange bulletin board. And I need someone who likes to play games. All those fun games, someone needs to be in charge of that so that the kids can get to do that. So look at your schedules and see if you can help one day. That's awesome. We'll take that. So that, and then I also need a couple more people who get to do the best part, and they stay with the kids as they go from science to, to crafts. And so I just need somebody who will be their station guide and be their person for the day, right? You don't have to make any preparations. You just get to hang out with the kids. It's the best job. It's the best job. <laughs> So look at your schedules, and if there's anything that, that you can help with, there will also be a snack list coming soon, probably next week, so things that we'll be collecting for snacks. Thank you.
Thank you, Stacy. And I hope you all join in and help out at VVS. It's so much fun and such a blessing to them. But we can't do it if we don't have help. So please join us for that. Our next hymn is number 710, Faith of Our Fathers. You can remain seated as we sing. Faith of our fathers living still In spite of dungeon, fire, and sword Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy When we hear that glorious word Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will strive to win all nations unto thee and through the truth that comes from god we all shall then be truly free faith of our fathers holy faith we will be true to thee till death faith of our fathers we will love both friend and foe in all our strife and preach thee to as love knows how by kindly words and virtuous life faith of our fathers holy faith we will be true to thee till death amen thank you our great heavenly father gives us all things and so it is a great privilege and blessing that we can give back to the work of his kingdom through our local church and today we are going to take our offering we also have our offering containers in the back if you're more comfortable with that but uh, our ushers are here and ellie's prepared for an offertory so with joy and thanksgiving let us present our tithes and our offerings to our great god
Let us pray together. How wonderful it is, Heavenly Father, of all the great things you give into our lives, our family, our friends, our homes, and all our wonderful material possessions, the beauty of the world, the gift of this day, all of it is coming from your loving hands given to your beloved children. And as your beloved children, O Lord, we return a portion of these many possessions that we have back to the work of your kingdom through this church. Receive these gifts and all who have given, be it online or by mailing it to the church or in our boxes or here in our offering plates right now. And help us each, O Lord, to be truly grateful for our many blessings and to be generous in giving, not only in the work of your church through our financial gifts, but especially of our time and our love and a listening ear, for all good things come from you. We praise you and especially thank you for the greatest gift given, which is Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture lesson is coming from the end of the book of Ruth, and I would invite you and challenge you to read Ruth. It's only four chapters, so it shouldn't take you that long, and it's a great story. It's in liminal story between judges and the kings. And so this is a liminal time, they're all saying. We have heard this in church circles anyway, but in other places too, that we're in a liminal time due to the pandemic, that it made us change things, that things are changing, we're in flux. And that's where we find Ruth. So let's share God's word for us today. And I like this passage because in Ruth, there's a little scandal in the middle of it. But I think that this passage clarifies that Ruth and Boaz did not join together Uh, in human way until uh, she became his wife. So let's share this verse today, these verses for us, and hear God's word. So Boaz took Ruth into his home, and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. Then the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law, who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. The neighbor women said, Now at last Naomi has a son again, and they named him Obed. And he became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And I should have added to that scripture lesson, David is the king, the famous king of Israel. So here we have a foreign woman and a man that you'll find out in a few minutes had a kind of not ideal upbringing. And they became the great-grandparents of the king. Well, little girl, since this is wedding season, as we saw from all those weddings, and I just had a big wedding this weekend, was at her first wedding. And she noticed that the bride was dressed all in white. And she said to her mom, well, why is she dressed all in white? Isn't that kind of going to get dirty and stuff? And her mother just looked there and said, well, white is for happiness. And today she is so very happy. And then the little girl looked at the wedding party, and she looked at the groom, and he was dressed, and she said, well, why is he dressed all in black then? (laughs) You'll get it eventually. (laughs) Well, Boaz was not dressed, he was not a reluctant groom, although he probably should have been. Boaz is a guy I kind of like to talk about as Garrison Keillor used to call him Norwegian bachelors. Have you ever known any Norwegian bachelors? I've known several. I had, I, Paul and I are always trying to fix up the Norwegian bachelors to little success. I've had no success in that. In fact, and throughout 30 years of ministry, none. <laughs> but we keep trying. So if you're a Norwegian bachelor, watch out. And what's a Norwegian bachelor? A hardworking, nice gentleman who, who's very dedicated, but 
and, and often dates people, but never commits. <laughs> and so we like him to make that next step. And that's who Boaz was. He was a good man. He really was a good man in his community. He was a wealthy landowner. He had several fields that he oversaw. He was successful. He was um, a faithful man. He was during the time of Israel when Ruth is written, it's at the end of Judges, as I said, and the last line in the book of Judges says this, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Does that sound familiar to anyone about how we live today? Most of us do what's right in our own eyes, don't we? I know often I do, but Boaz did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He still kept God's commandments. He still studied the Bible. He still understood what the Bible said. And so when Ruth and Naomi arrive back in Israel, Naomi, being a wisdom woman, looks around, and in that time and day, they didn't have uh, food pantries like we have. We're so blessed to have food pantries today, and we know we give to those, and Dave and, and Judy certainly work really, and other of you I know, I just know you two are the kind of the people I see as the pictures of the food pantry, <laughs> and, um, but they didn't have food pantries. They didn't have uh, Social Security. They didn't have Medicare. They didn't have, uh, they didn't have any of that, none of that. So you had to rely on your family to take care of you. And Naomi had left Israel. She had left her family. She had left her people, her and her husband had during a drought. And they had done something that really was not acceptable. They went into the land of Moab. And Moabites, which is what Ruth was, are not good people. Not the kind of people you want to be around. Not the kind of people you want to know. And you can look up why. They had their own issues, <laughs> always issues. And so here then Ru um, Naomi let her sons marry Moabite women. So they had really not followed God's way at all by leaving Israel, not trusting God to provide for them. And, then, uh, and it was a drought, so we understand why they would do that. I mean, they lived off the land. But then they had these two daughter-in-laws. But then tragedy struck Naomi's life. Her husband died, and both of her sons died. That's horrible. She had nothing left, and she was in a foreign country. And so then she knows she needs to head back to home. But as she heads back, she tells everyone to start calling her not Naomi anymore, but Mara. Mara means bitter. Call me a bitter woman, because I'm bitter. That's how she'd introduce herself. Now, if you're a rich landowner... And you, live, and you live in Israel, and you see a Moabite woman and Naomi who's telling you, everyone, that she's bitter, is that what you're really going to want to sign up with when you're a single Norwegian bachelor? I don't think I'm going to. In fact, I think I'm going to stay away from them. <laughs> so, but God is interesting in how he works things out. And so this story is not even so much as about these four little chapters about all these things and there's these characters in them. But it's really interesting is how a reminder that God is still at work. Even if you are on your worst day ever, like Naomi, and worst period in your life ever, like Naomi was. I mean, she was full of grief and, and just dejection. And she has Ruth now with her because Ruth won't leave her. I mean, I mean, it's not good. And yet God is going to use her and Ruth and Boaz to do amazing thing. They are in the lineage not only of King David. They are also in the lineage of the Messiah. You can't get better than that, friends. It's amazing. It gives me chills when I think about it. So when your life isn't going the way you think, I want to remind you, if you turn to God, as Ruth did, Ruth said, I, I'll take your God as my God, because they, she worshipped all sorts of gods, but she said, no, I'm going to take your God as my God, and I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to worship him, and where you go, I'll go, and, and that's a famous passage too. But God writes the end of stories, friends. So if your story hasn't been written quite as you want yet, God writes the end of the story. And so that's what Ruth reminds us to trust. 
that even if, even in illness, even in death, that's not the end of your story when God's involved, that God's writing the end of the story. And even, even if you've lost people, like today's a hard day for me, which I always wondered why Father's Day is harder than Mother's Day, because really I was closer to my mother, but everyone always said I was more like my father. <laughs> but it's a hard day for us who've lost our parents. And so even if you've lost your loved ones, God is still writing the end of that story. He's written the end of their story. He's writing the end of our story. And when God writes the story, the ending is always good. One thing I got from my father is perseverance. And this is just my little tid to father to my father today, that I have perseverance, which has served me well most of my life. Although in some cases, it's called bulldog tenacity, i.e. super stubborn. <laughs> so it doesn't always serve people around me well, but it has served me well. And it doesn't always serve me well like we've invested some money and I never want to sell. So it's not good for that because when you invest, you have to let go of stuff. But Mark Twain had this to say about fathers. He said, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I couldn't hardly stand to be around the old man. But when I got to 21, I was astonished at how much he had learned in seven years. Right? Isn't that true? The older we get, the smarter our parents become. And that's the truth. And my father, one of, the reason I have this picture up here is a tribute to my father, because, which I didn't always think was so smart. But my dad loved to bale hay. It was his favorite Thing to do. Maybe you have a father like that too. Now, my father had to work in a factory to support our family because we had a small farm and it was during the 80s. It was just a very hard time. I'm amazed now when I'm older to see all my dad did. But the thing I remember, the, the, I, rem, I love to see big, large, round bales, not only because they remind me of father, but they were my deliverance. Because when my father got a big, round baler, I got to get out of the hay mound. Yes, that's how I got my muscles early on, it was because I was up in the hay mound dragging hay off the elevator to my father to stack. Uh, we had little square bales and, you know, rectangle bales in those days. And my favorite thing about that job was sitting on the elevator and riding it down out of the hay mound. So that was a great job. So happy Father's Day to every father here and fathers in the flesh and fathers in the faith. And it's certainly our day to show love to people and to honor them. And think about how God honors fathers. God chose fathers to be his imitation because he said, Jesus told us, call God Abba, Daddy, Father. That is a great tribute to all you men, that God knows your job is so important that he's willing for us as his beloved children to call him our heavenly father. Now, I know there's lots of father issues out there. Believe me, as a pastor and as a woman, I know all these things. But lots of men are wonderful in our lives, whether they're our earthly fathers or biological fathers or not. And so today, let's show them extra respect and love by honoring them. And the way we honor our fathers is by living well, right? And by recognizing the tremendous amount of good they do for us and the important work they do. The work you do, men, is important. It's important, your, your stability, your faithfulness, like Boaz. Now, Boaz wasn't a remarkable person. It doesn't seem like he was super talented. He was faithful doing his work, just like my dad was. My dad wasn't a super skilled person, but he was faithful, he went to church, he read the Bible, he worked hard, and he was faithful. And that's such a good, solid foundation for the people in your life. I've had people in, in having struggles, and I said to them, one thing, stay faithful and see what happens. And so, friends, today we say thank you to you, and thank you for being faithful. If you're faithful, that is an awesome thing to be at any day, but especially on this day. And Boaz was faithful. He prayed to God. He was a respected leader in his community. And uh, the Jewish recording of his background is that his mother was Rahab the prostitute. Now, there is no reason for him to be faithful and upstanding, is there? 
Do you know that Rahab the prostitute was the one who helped Joshua and all the, the spies take over Jericho? And that's what the Jewish history that...